I have a budget knife I want to share with you today. Today it is the Haltefors Craftsman, a very inexpensive yet very capable small knife. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, quickly, I picked this up off of Amazon Canada not too long ago, and I was just going to pass it by, but it came up on my notification feed as selling for $10. If you can buy a half decent knife for $10, grab it. And that's exactly what I did. Now the regular going price for these is only $13. So it's not like it's expensive to start with, but at $10 with Amazon Prime, I had this in a couple of days and I was very happy I did. I'd always wanted one of these halter four knives and there's a number of them that are very applicable to bushcraft. This was not designed for bushcraft. This is a carpenter's knife, a craft knife. It's just a small little uh, knife. I'll show you a comparison against one of the Moras in the same classification. And it's just something I thought would be good to have and test. Like I said, am I ever glad I did because it performs exceptionally well for a small knife. So uh, that's what I'll do. I'll give you the specifications for this and we'll do a little demonstration, but let me just first put it in perspective. This is not your primary belt knife. I mean, it can be if you're only going to go out for the day, you have no intention of doing any wood processing, but you do want a knife with you, maybe food prep, start in the fire, that type of thing. Yeah, you could probably get by with this knife. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's capable of that. Uh, I have not batoned this knife. I think it probably could be batoned through very small pieces of wood. But as I said, I usually take another knife with me, and so I'll baton with, baton with that one. Today I have a very small hatchet that I use to split some wood up for this demonstration. But it's, again, just a small, maybe a backup knife, maybe a crafting knife but not a primary knife. I mean, yes, you can use it for food prep as well. So let me just give you a few close-ups and I'll give you the specifications for it. And then we'll compare it against a Mora of the same size. And then I'll just do some very quick demonstrations with it. All right, so the Halter Force Craftsman did come in this small plastic sheaf. It's uh, just a very generic thing, very similar to what the Mora knives come in. It does have the buttonhole on the back if you have pants with a button on it that you want to attach it to. Otherwise, let me just take the knife out and show you. The sheaf does have a little fold over. It's very, very thin belt loop, but it will grab onto something if you wanted it to. Uh, again, if it's not a primary knife, this just goes in the back of my backpack and I don't worry about it too much. It's, it's secure enough and that's really all that matters. I guess one thing you could do with this knife, and because I have done it with the more of its equal size, is carry it as a neck knife. So certainly you could put a piece of cord through there and drop it in around your neck. Yes, it comes with an orange handle. In fact, I appreciate that because knife like this, something that's a backup knife, is something that I want to be able to find in my backpack when I need it, and I don't want to drop it on the forest floor and lose it. So let me take it out of the sheath, put it the sheath aside, and give you a few specifications. All right, so the overall length of this knife, let me bring it back so you can get the whole thing in focus, is 8.2 inches, which is 208 millimeters. The blade length is 3.66 inches, which is 93 millimeters and it weighs in at 2.8 ounces, which is 78 grams. It has a two and a half millimeter stock blade, which is made from Japanese carbon steel. Uh, the best I could find is that it may be SK5, uh, steel. There wasn't any good reference to it on the Hultifors website. They do say, however, that it is hardened to 58 to 60 on the Rockwell scale. Knowing that some of the other knives that Hultifors use are made from SK5 is where I made that bit of a leap to uh, this being SK5 as well. So a good Japanese steel, carbon steel. So uh, being a carbon steel, of course, you are, you are going to have to do some uh, maintenance to it on occasion, make sure it doesn't rust on you. It is not especially enduring edge, you know, will dull after a bit of time, but again and again, it's very easy to sharpen. So it does have a Scandinavian grind, but it is not a zero grind. There is a secondary bevel on the bottom, just a very, very slight micro bevel, which is exactly what you want on a knife like this to give it a little bit of toughness. You can see the spine itself is not finished, so it is kind of rough. At the same time, this still throws sparks from a ferrous Syrian rod. It's got enough of an edge on it. And if yours doesn't arrive with an edge that's to your satisfaction on the back of the knife, a little file, very fine file, and it will sharpen up very nice. What I like about this is the handle itself. And well, let me bring in the Mora and I'll give you some comparisons. Bring them back so you can see the two of them side by side, I guess. 
So here we go. This is my Mora 510, and it is uh, almost identical to the Mora 511. The, this is the older style, except it doesn't have the uh, thumb guard on it, so otherwise they're identical. And so this is virtually identical in almost every way to the Mora 511. That's the best comparison again. Mora 511 isn't expensive either, but it is a slight bit more expensive than the Haltafors is. So I'll just give you a few close-ups. So they're both made from the same thick the steel two and a half millimeters. Now I did sharpen the back of this one with a file just to make it a little bit more uh, usable for a ferrocerium rod but the blade length virtually identical. Now you'll notice that it's the Haltafurs is a little bit thicker uh, top to edge but not by much maybe a millimeter at the mouth but here is where things start to differ. Look at the handle length. So the handle Hopefully that's showing up on camera. The handle length on the halter force is, you know, quarter inch uh, longer than the handle on the Mora. And it is that handle length and the thickness of the handle in both directions, top to bottom, as well as uh, through back through the sides that make it just a little bit more hand filling for me. Now, I do have double XL hands and I still swallow this knife up so that it disappears in my hands, but just a little bit more handle on it, which is great. And that's true of all the Halter Force knives. They just seem to have a little bit bigger handles than the Mora knives do. And here's one thing that I appreciate. I didn't even know it was going to be there until I got the knife is that this ramp right here, which means that in reverse grip, when you're doing a chest lever, you have a place to put your thumb and uh, rest it there and keep control over the knife. All right. So you don't need to do a whole lot more as far as uh, review on this goes. It has a, what's known as about a three quarter inch hidden tang. So it's not a full tang knife, which is the reason why I would hesitate to uh, baton with it through anything maybe thicker than my finger. Just little things like that would be about the only thing I might baton with this. Carry another knife. That's the, the primary rule. Make this your backup knife, your secondary knife, or your crafting knife for that matter. So like I said, there's not much more to show you or tell you about this, but let me just give you a little bit of a demonstration of what it's capable of. All right, so I just split out a piece of dead maple that was probably an inch and a half, not quite two inches in diameter. And good quality wood, very dry, and of course, very hard. But uh, all right, let's just see. I, I don't expect this will do a per tremendous job of feather sticking, but I think it'll do a very reasonable job. And I think the way I'll do it today is just hold my hand off of my knee to keep it steady and then draw the wood back so that I, I don't get inside between my thighs when I'm doing it. So yeah, let's just see. First couple to see what I can establish in terms of a couple of curls. Make sure I'm back far enough for you to catch what I'm doing here. Trying to make sure that the curls are staying on the stick at the same time. There are a little bit bigger ones to hold it on. So I am losing some of them down off of the side. That uh, happens when you make feather sticks. I lost my whole bunch there. But at the same time, I'll just pick them up and use them because they are still dry and thin, which is exactly what you want for starting a fire. They don't have to still be on the stick to work. Okay, not a huge feather stick, but just enough to show you that this little knife is capable of doing fire starting tasks, which is exactly what you want. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, just a quick review of the Craftsman from Halta Force. Just a nice little, I consider it a backup knife or a crafty knife. Certainly not a primary bushcraft knife, but again, still capable of most of the tasks you ask of your bushcraft knives. It will feather, it will baton, small wood, but again, I'm not using this for baton.
tawny because if I'm carrying this out in the wood, uh, usually I always have something else as a primary tool. So uh, that's the one I will use and just reserve this for when I need it or again for small tasks. I guess, again, the thing I like about it, and I'll likely carry it this way on occasion, is add a neck knife. Just put a piece of cord through there and put it inside my jacket and it's a nice, easy to reach, easy to use knife for all the small tasks that a neck knife is normally uh, put through. So here's the thing. Now that I've purchased this knife and I got it at such a good deal, I'm going to be watching for the other Halter Force knives. There are a couple of them that are designed for bushcraft, so they are tough enough and uh, beefy enough to use for all the bushcraft tasks. I think they compete very well against Mora knives and I would certainly not hesitate to buy one if the price is right. So again, if I do happen to get my hand on a couple more of these Halter Force knives, I'll bring them back to you. All right, so what I will do is I'll be putting the information for this knife, the specifications in the video description, as well as the link to the uh, uh, Amazon where I purchased this knife. I think I'll put a link into the Halter Force company, again, or company as well, so you can see it there. Uh, you may have to do a little shopping around if uh, you're on a uh, US or the UK and you're looking around. Just keep your eye out for these things because I do believe they go down in price every once in a while so it'll be worthwhile again just picking one of these up if for no other reason than to put in your backpack and have it there when you need it all right uh, get out and explore take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference bye for now